1968 Winter Olympics, Wikipedia article audio. The 1968 Winter Olympics, officially known as the X Olympic Winter Games, were a winter multi-sport event which was celebrated in 1968 in Grenoble, France, and opened on February 6. 37 countries participated. Frenchman Jean-Claude Kelly won three gold medals in all the alpine skiing events. In women's figure skating, Peggy Fleming won the only United States gold medal. The Games have been credited with making the Winter Olympics more popular in the United States, not least of which because of ABC's extensive coverage of Fleming and Kelly, who became overnight sensations among teenage girls. The year 1968 marked the first time the IOC first permitted East and West Germany to enter separately, and the first time the IOC ever ordered drug and gender testing of competitors. On November 24, 1960 the Prefect of the ICER Department, François Raoul, and the President of the Dauphiné Ski Federation, Raoul Arduin, officially presented for the first time the idea of hosting the 1968 Winter Olympic Games in Grenoble. After the city council agreed in principle, different government agencies offered their support, and the villages around Grenoble also reacted positively, an application committee was formed and led by Albert Michalin, the former mayor of Grenoble on December 30, 1960. The application was officially given to the IOC during a meeting between IOC executives and representatives of international sport agencies in Lausanne in February 1963. In the application the decision was not solely based on sport because in the ICER department there had only been two important sport events, the Bobsleigh World Championships of 1951 in Al Alpdehus and the Luge World Championships of 1959 in Villard des Between 1946 and 1962 the number of inhabitants in Grenoble increased from 102,000 to 159,000 and the total inhabitants in the department ICER increased from 139,000 to 250,000. The development of the infrastructure could not keep up with this rapid increase and was for the most part at the same level as before the Second World War. The people who were responsible never made a secret out of it that it was mainly for them about using the Olympic Games to receive larger grants to quickly develop dated infrastructure and support the local economy. The 61st IOC Session where the awarding of the Olympic Games should have been voted for, should have taken place in Nairobi. This session was moved to Baden-Baden because Kenya refused entry to IOC members from Portugal and South Africa for political reasons. Due to a lack of time only the Summer Games of 1968 could be voted for. The vote finally took place in Innsbruck on January 28, 1964. One day before the start of the 1964 Winter Olympic Games 51 members who were eligible to vote were in attendance in Grenoble were awarded the Games after the third round of voting and were competing against Calgary, who were awarded the Games 20 years later. After Grenoble was voted as the host city the French National Olympic Sports Committee decided the foundation of the organization committee. The Comité de Organisation de Dixiums Jure Olympiques, the committee for the organization of the 10th Olympic Games started to plan the Games for the first time on August 1, 1964. Albert Michalin, alongside being the former mayor of Grenoble, was also president of COJO. The upper panel was made up of the General Assembly with its 340 members and the Supervisory Board Conduct Business with 39 members, 19 of which were appointed and the other 20 were voted for. The General Secretary consisted of five main departments and 17 subordinate departments. The number of employees grew to 1920 in February 1968. The French government played a major role in the preparations for the Games because President Charles de Gaulle saw an opportunity in the Winter Olympic Games to present Grenoble as a symbol for a modern France. Minister for Youth and Sport François Massoff formed an interministerial committee for the coordination of the work commissioned by Prime Minister Georges Pompidou. Just over 7,000 soldiers of the French Armed Forces and also employees of the Ministries for Youth and Sport, Finance, Social Building, Education, Post, Culture and Transport were employed. The sum of the investments contributed to 1 1 billion francs. The government contributed 47.08%, the ISIR Department 365%, the City of Grenoble 20.07% and the surrounding communities 137%. Different institutions, such as the train company SNCF, the television broadcaster ORTF, the Government Housing Association and the Regional Association of Hospitals provided the rest of the money. 
These means were used accordingly 465 181 million francs for the infrastructure of transport and communications, 250 876 million for the Olympic Village and Press Area, 92 517 million for the sports arenas, 57 502 million for television and radio, 45 674 million for culture. 95 116 million for the city's infrastructure and 9429 million for the running of Kajo. They built a new airport, two motorway sections of 75 miles and 15 miles, a switchboard, a new town hall, a new police station, a fire station, a hospital with 560 beds, a congress and exhibition center and a culture palace. They upgraded the access road to the outer sport arenas and orbital roads around Grenoble as well as relocating the rail tracks and removing the level crossings and building a completely new main train station. To test the new sport complex and to improve organizational processes they organized International Sports Weeks. From January 20th to February 19th 1967 speed skating competitions and ski races took place. From 12 to October 15, 1967 an ice hockey tournament and from 23 to November 25 a figure skating competition. On December 16, 1967, the Olympic torch was lit in ancient Olympia in Greece. The ceremony initially should have taken place on December 13 but it had to be postponed because of the coup d'etat of King Constantine II, who had been forced from his throne eight months before against the dictatorial military regime of Georgius Papatropoulos. The route of the torch relay at first led over Mount Olympus to Athens. From there, the torch was flown by an Air France Boeing 707 to the Paris Orly Airport. There the torch was received by Jean Vuarnet, the 1960 downhill Olympic gold medalist, on December 19, who handed it on to the first torchbearer Elaine Mimon, the 1956 marathon Olympic gold medalist. The torch relay in France went over a distance of 7,222 kilometers through 41 districts and 170 towns to the Iser district. All in all 5,000 torchbearers, who transported the torch on foot, by bike, by boat, by skies or by motorbike, took part in the relay. The part of the way that led through the old harbor of Marseilles was done by a diver who, while swimming, held the torch just over the surface of the water. The torchbearers were accompanied by around 80,000 athletes and watched by an audience of about 2 million people. The last stop on the day before the opening ceremony was saint pierre de chartreuse From there, the torch was carried to Grenoble. The 33 torches that were used in the relay were produced by the Société Technique d'Equipement, a firm of the Compagnie de Saint-Joban. They were 70 centimeters tall, weighed 1,750 grams were made of copper and had a propane gas tank. The reserve flames burned in 20 carbide lamps, the same as the Olympic fire when it was transported from Athens to Paris in a plane. The logo portrays a floating snow crystal, which is surrounded by three stylized roses and is on top of the single-colored Olympic rings. The roses can be found in the same pattern as Grenoble emblem. The logo is surrounded by Zezger Olympiques de Hiver 1968 Grenoble. For the first time there was an Olympic mascot, although it was unofficial. The mascot was called Shoes, who was a stylized skier wearing a blue skiing costume and a large red ball as a head. The mascot designed by Aline Lafargue was hardly recognized publicly. It had unofficial character, was marked with great restraint and appeared solely on pins and several toys. Jack Lesage who specialized in mountain and winter sport recordings filmed to Olympic advertisements of 15-18 minutes in length before the Olympic Games took place contracted by the organization committee. Through our roses, Sink and Oaks emerged in 1966 and showed Grenoble as well as the surrounding venues in the early stage of the preparation in 1967 Vainker A Grave Grenoble, which documented the progress of the workers, complemented with images of the sport competitions. Both films appeared in three different versions with French, English and German commentary. In France the films were shown in cinemas before particular feature films, abroad for receptions and presentations. The French post office issued six Olympic-themed postage stamps. On April 22, 1967 a label next appeared worth 060 francs with the official logo as its motif. On January 27, 1968, ten days before the opening ceremony, a series of five semi-postal stamps followed. 
The designs were ski jumpers and skiers, ice hockey players, the Olympic torch, a female ice skater and slalom racers. The proceeds from the supplement stamps were split between the French Red Cross and the organization committee. There were five other venues surrounding Grenoble used as sporting venues for the Olympic Games in 1968. Like never before seen at a Winter Olympic Games, the venues were divided into four different places. Grenoble set a new trend by having venues in different parts of the surrounding area. Before it was commonplace to have all the venues together. Compared to the investments for the infrastructure, the investments for building sports arenas was very small. This investment only contributed 9%. Almost half of this investment, 46 million francs, was used to build the new ice rink Stade des Glaces, and where Group A's ice hockey matches, the figure skating competition and the closing ceremony all took place. The arena has 12,000 seats and is situated in Parc Paul Mistral, Grenoble's town park located in the center of the city. The architects were Robert de Martini and Pierre Junolin. Construction began in mid-November 1965 and finished in October 1967. The roof was made of two cylindrical which crossed over each other, four columns which could support 10,000 tons. Today the arena is used for concerts, fairs and various other sporting events. Less than 100 meters away from the Stade des Glaces, and also in Parc Paul Mistral, the 400-meter track for the speed skating events was installed between February and November 1966. The venue Padinoir Davites which does not have a roof and in the middle of it has a practice ice rink, had a capacity of 2,500. The cooling system was removed after a few years and today the concrete track is used by roller skaters. The only ready venue was the city's ice rink Padinoir Municipal, which opened in September 1963, next to the speed skating track where the 1964 figure skating European Championship took place. The arena, which is 2,000 seats and 700 can stand, was the venue for Group B's ice hockey matches. The venue for the alpine skiing took place in Chamraus, a town 30 kilometers east of Grenoble. The finishing line for five out of the six races was in the region of Recoin de Chamraus, the other was the men's downhill event was in Casaraus. In the construction of the new ski slopes around 300,000 meters raised to the power of three of rocks had to be blown up or dug away, particularly large movements of the earth and changes to the terrain were necessary in the upper part of the men's downhill section and in the slalom section. In addition six new chairlifts were installed. In the preparation of the slopes over 10,000 people were needed, this consisted mainly of soldiers. In Autrans, 36 kilometers west of Grenoble and Verkers Massif, the cross-country skiing event and biathlon took place there. Provisional stands at the finish line were available for spectators, which were to the north and southwest of the village. Also in Autrans, the ski jumping in the normal hill took place. The ski jumping hill of Lee Claret is still in use today. It originally had a hill size of 70 meters, but later was made bigger and now measures 90 meters high. The 90 meter hill could have been built without any problems in Autrans. But the organizers decided instead to use Saint Nazaire du Mautret, 17 kilometers away from Grenoble, as well as Verkers Massif. The relatively small distance to the city and the better accessibility guaranteed a larger audience. The construction period lasted from July 1966 to January 1967. After the games, the Dauphine Hill was only rarely used for competitions, and since 1990, it closed down and fell into ruin. A third Olympic venue in the Verkers Massif was Villard de Lens, 34 kilometers from Grenoble, where the luge competition took place. The track is exactly 1,000 meters long, has 14 curves and has a drop of 110 meters. After it temporarily closed down in 1994 it was remodeled. Today it now has an artificial surface which makes it possible to use all year round. It is no longer used for competitions. The third Olympic venue in Verkers Massif was 34 kilometers away from Grenoble in the commune of Villard de Lens, where the luge competition took place. The track for the luge was exactly one kilometer long, had 14 corners and had a drop of 110 meters. After the track was temporarily closed in 1994, it was rebuilt at today's location. It has an artificial surface, which makes using the track all year round possible. For competitions it is no longer used. The furthest distance, which is also the highest, 
is El Altius, 65 kilometers southeast of Grenoble. The bobsleigh took place at Carl de Poutron at a height of around 2,000 meters. It was 1,500 meters long, had 13 corners and had a drop of 140 meters. It was principally a natural course but three of the corners were exposed to direct sunlight and was kept artificially frozen by ammonia and liquid nitrogen. In El Altius a replacement course was made available for the alpine skiing. The Olympic Village was located in the southern part of the city on the border with the suburbs of HRLs and Ebens. On the site of the former airport Grenoble Muramus, a large housing estate with 6,500 rooms was built in two years. A primary school, a secondary school, a nursery, a youth center, a shopping center and a library were all built as part of the construction of the housing estate. All of these were still in use after the Olympic Games. The Malay athletes were housed in a tower block and in 11 apartment blocks. The female athletes lived in a building with 263 individual rooms, which later went on to serve as a home for workers. In other buildings on the estate housed around 12,000 trainers, officials, timekeepers, volunteers, police and drivers. The catering took place in a future school kitchen. Two more. Much smaller Olympic villages were available to the Nordic and Alpine skiers as well as their physios. Holiday homes were also newly built and were located in Autrans and Chamraus. One year before the Olympics, at the pre-Olympic competitions there was great adversity. The accommodation did not meet the necessary standards, so much so the Austrian team left. This led the hosts to have a rethink and make improvements. There were 35 events contested in 6 sports. In Grenoble, there was 1,158 athletes and 37 teams, which was a new record in terms of the number of participants. This was Morocco's first appearance at the Winter Olympics. Similar to the Summer Olympics 1952, when Saarland who had sent its own team but had not been integrated as a part of West Germany, there were two teams participating from Germany. For the first time, the German Democratic Republic was present with its own team. It was provisionally accepted into the IOC, so long as East Germany formed a complete German team consisting of athletes from both the West and East. This had to be done under the leadership of the National Olympic Committee for Germany, a board recognized by the IOC. Following on from this the National Olympic Committee of East Germany tried to achieve complete recognition. This did not work out because of resistance from Karl Ritter von Halt, the president of the National Olympic Committee for Germany who was close friends with the IOC president Avery Brundage. After Haltite in 1961, the same year that the Berlin Wall was built, under his successor Willy Duom the close contact with the IOC leadership was lost. In addition the reality of the split made the qualification almost impossible. On October 8, 1965 the IOC decided to accept East Germany as a full member. In order to avoid existing restrictions concerning NATO countries, such as the ban on all East German symbols, in particular the flag with socialist symbols introduced in 1959, both national Olympic committees agreed on using the same flag and anthem. The black-red gold flag with the white Olympic rings in the middle of it has been used at all Olympic Games since 1960, as well as the replacement anthem Oden die Frude from Beethoven's Ninth Symphony, which was used previously. Both countries presented themselves as completely independent from 1972. On January 21, 1968, Ralph Poland, who was 21, was one of the most famous East German Winter Olympians, fled to West Germany after the pre-Olympic tournament at Lebiax, Switzerland. His assistant in helping to flee was George Toma, a West German ski jumper. This incident led to relationships between the two German teams turning sour, which never used to be the case. These are the top 10 nations that won medals at the 1968 Winter Games. Host Nation. For the Olympic Winter Games in Grenoble, in total 228 gold, silver and bronze medals were manufactured. They were designed by Roger Xcuffin and was coined by the French minting company Monet de Paris. For the first time in Olympic history, the medals, given out for the winners in every sport, had their own design. The logo of the games was depicted on the front of the medal and on the other was a pictogram etched into the surface that depicted the sport the medal winner competed in. The medals had a diameter of 50 mm and were 3 mm thick. The gold and silver medals consisted of silver with a composition of 925-1000, 1000, 
but the gold medals were coated in an additional 6 grams of gold. The medals hang of ribbons in the Olympic colors, which happened to also be a first, before 1968 they had used chains. In addition, the athletes received a box made of black leather, which was lined with either white, blue or red silk. The commemoration medal was designed by Josette Aber Coeffin. The front side of the medal depicted the decorated head of a Greek athlete with snowflakes and ice crystals in the background. The other side of the medal depicted the silhouette of Grenoble in front of the mountain range Baladon. There were three different types of medals 20 were made of silver, 210 of silver coated bronze and 15,000 of bronze. Excafan also designed the Olympic diplomas, which were given to the six best athletes in each discipline. They were made of cream-colored parchment paper. Around the logo contained the words Access Your Olympics de Hiver Grenoble 1968 as well as the Olympic motto, Sidious, Altius, Fortius, meaning quicker, higher, stronger. In the middle of the paper, the word Diplom was written in gold writing. However, similar Diplom were handed out to officials, participants, journalists and volunteers on ordinary white paper and without the gold writing as a souvenir. The medal ceremony took place in the evening of the finals event in the Stade des Glaces. Compared to the Winter Olympics in 1964 in Innsbruck, the number of disciplines increased to 35, the men's biathlon relay was also added. On February 4, two days before the official opening ceremony, three ice hockey preliminary matches took place, in order to place three further teams into Group A alongside the five teams already assigned to the group. The losers were placed into Group B. For the opening ceremony, a temporary stadium was built supported by scaffolding and was able to hold 60,000 spectators. The state inaugural was situated in the immediate vicinity to the Olympic Village and Press Center. At the back of the stadium there was a steel scaffold which kept host to the Olympic flame, located in a 4-meter wide bowl at the top, which also was able to take 550 kilograms in weight. There was also stairs leading to the top containing 96 flights. The ceremony began on February 6 at 3 p.m., a Tuesday, with the French President Charles de Gaulle in attendance. Among the 500 invited guests of honor was IOC President Avery Brundage, the Iranian Empress Farah Pahlavi, the Danish Crown Princess Margrethe and the Grand Duchess of Luxembourg Josephine Charlotte. After the Marseillaise was sung, the French national anthem, cultural performances followed. The procession of the athletes into the stadium was traditionally led by the Greek team. The other teams proceeded into the stadium in alphabetical order, starting with West Germany and then East Germany. The last team out was the hosts, the French team. Albert Michelin, president of Kajo, said in his speech that all athletes and visitors are welcome. Brundage again recollected Pierre de Coubertin's ideals and expressed the hope of these ideals lead to a peaceful and less materialistic world. He invited Charles de Gaulle to open the games. De Gaulle appeared on the stage and read out the opening set phrase. Fourteen chassers Albin soldiers carried the Olympic flag into the stadium and put it up. The organizers had decided against the usual tradition of letting the peace dove fly. Instead they let out 500 small Olympic flags on paper parachutes and 30,000 perfumed artificial roses from three helicopters over the stadium. Following this, the figure skater Elaine Comet was the last torched bearer to enter the stadium. He climbed up the steps to the bowl, where his heartbeat amplified over the loudspeakers. Once at the top, he lit the Olympic flame. Shortly afterwards, skier Leo Lacour read out the Olympic oath. At the end, the Patrouille de France, the aerobatic flight display team, flew over the stadium and marked out the colors of the Olympic rings with their vapor trails in the sky. The Winter Olympics ended on February 18, on a Sunday evening, with the closing ceremony in the Stade des Glaces. The first highlight showed the figure skaters putting on an exhibition skating session. It also included ice dancing, an event that was first introduced into the main program in 1976. The best 10 partners from the last world championship took part in the event and there was no scores. After that the last awards ceremonies then took place. After the Marseillaise was played, all athletes who were still in Grenoble reassembled onto the ice and the flag bearers formed a semicircle. Whilst the flags of Greece, France and next host Japan were put up, 
A torchbearer brought the Olympic flame into the stadium and ignited it into a bowl on the ice. IOC President Avery Brundage thanked the organizers and declared the games over. When the Olympic flag was pulled down, gun salutes were heard all across the town and finally the flame went out. At the age of 11 years and 158 days, the Romanian figure skater Beatrice Hustiu became the youngest female participant at these Winter Games. She took part in the singles event and finished in 29th place, which was third from bottom. The youngest Malay participant was aged 12 years and 110 days. He was also a figure skater called Jan Hoffman, who represented East Germany. In Grenoble he finished in 26th place and was also third from bottom. In 1974 and 1980 he became world champion and also in 1980 he won silver in the Olympic Games at Lake Placid. The American speed skater Diane Holm was the youngest medal winner. She won silver in the 500-meter event at the age of 16 years and 266 days. Two days later she added a bronze by competing in the 1,000-meter event. The youngest gold medal winner was also from the USA. She was figure skater Peggy Fleming who won at the age of 19 years and 198 days. The oldest medal winner and at the same time oldest gold medal winner was the Italian Eugenio Monti. He won the gold medal in the four-man bobsleigh team at the age of 40 years and 25 days. Five days before that he had also won the two-man bobsleigh team gold medal. The public became more and more aware of the doping issue during the 1960s. The first death caused by doping at the Olympic Games happened in 1960 in Rome, when the Danish cyclist Nut Enemark Jensen, who took amphetamines, fell off his bike and died. This took a further four years until the IOC recognized the seriousness of the situation and created a medical commission. In 1967, the IOC followed the example set by other sport associations and proclaimed a ban on doping. For the first time, doping control was carried out at the 1968 Winter Olympics. The IOC tested 86 athletes but all the tests came back negative. Also in 1967, the IOC decided to carry out gender controls, in order to prevent hermaphrodites from competing at women's competitions. Multiple female athletes from Eastern Europe immediately retired after the IOC had decided this, which led to a lot of speculation. Eric Schoeniger, the female downhill 1966 world champion from Austria, was tested a couple of days before the Winter Games in 1968, it turned out she was actually a man. Schinniger, whose gender had not been correctly identified for years because she had internal male sex organs, decided to have the operation and changed her first name from Erica to Eric. The media representatives lived in an apartment complex that was built between April 1966 and October 1967 a few hundred meters away from the Olympic Village in Malherbe a central part of Grenoble. The complex consisted of 7 8 to 10 floored towers totaling 637 flats, an underground car park and a school. The school housed an IBM computer center, a copy center, the studios of the French radio and TV broadcaster ORTF and broadcasters from other countries, photo laboratories and other technical amenities. The offices of the newspaper and photojournalists, of the technicians and of the general administration were situated on the bottom floors of the towers, the other floors served as accommodation. The press restaurant was later used as a car park. There were also smaller press centers in the Stade des Glaces in Grenoble and at the five other venues in Autrins, Chamraus, El Alpe d'Huz, saint nazaire du Mouchard and Villard de Lens. The organizing committee Kajo assigned 1,545 accreditations to the following people 1,095 went to press, radio and television journalists, 301 to photographers and 149 to other unnamed groups. On September 19, 1966, Kajo signed an exclusive contract with ORTF for the provision of broadcasting on the television Ebus catchment area and to Canada. On February 14, 1967, the American Broadcasting Company received the exclusive broadcasting rights for the U.S. and Latin America. On October 15, 1967, NHK received the rights to broadcast in Japan. For the first time in the history of the Olympic Games, the games were transmitted in color. ORTF installed 25 color and 37 black and white cameras. The total broadcasting time lasted 150 hours and 15 minutes, 91 hours and 25 minutes were in color. 
the total number of viewers was recorded at 600 million. Concerning the question of scoring the men's freestyle figure skating and the unfortunate circumstances of the men's slalom, the Bild am Sonntag published the title im and Cam der Gross Crack. The Munkner Merkers said that they would have tolerated Schrantz's disqualification, but the incidents in the figure skating had led to a bitter aftertaste. Notes Citations <laughs>